We are going to the storage unit to pick up the Quattro 300P. I think it's the 300P, right? It's the 12 inch. 12 inch monster is in one of these storage lockers. So we've had this storage locker for like, what, over a year, right? Two years. Almost two years. Two years and the observatory is in here. The sky should pod is in here and a couple of scopes, one of them being just a big reflector that has never come out two yet. Reflectors two reflectors. I think the eight inch and the 12 inch are in our good old storage locker here. Which is a bit rusty. All right. <laughs> hey, that's where our basketball is. Oh, she's flat. Okay. Is that gonna fit in my car? Oh, she'll fit. Dusty. Oh boy. <laughs> You're not supposed to lift that by yourself. It's light. So I open the box. This thing's huge, and I realize there's no mirror in here. <laughs> it's just the tube. So we need to go back to the storage unit and get the mirror and install it. We haven't been here in a year. All of a sudden we're here twice in the same time. Let's find this thing. I think that's it. <laughs> That's definitely it. Nothing else, that's it. Are you sure? Hey. That's a mirror right there. So I finally got this big monster mounted to the EQ8. When we picked up the scope, I didn't realize that we forgot the mirror inside. I just picked up the tube itself. So I had to install the 12 inch mirror at the back of the Quattro 300P. Getting it mounted on the EQ8 was a bit scary. It's a very heavy telescope. It's the heaviest telescope I've ever mounted on a telescope mount before. Three counterweights, a new record. So I think the size of it, the overall size and mass, 60 pounds of this telescope, not only limits the you know number of people that have telescope mounts robust enough to take on a scope like this but it's i mean it's a lot of work to get that out here it's basically a two-man job so i'm hoping that my 365 cover can go on top of this thing and i can actually leave it out here for a few nights because i wouldn't want to be pulling this thing in and out this just wouldn't make any sense so the telescope itself is 1200 millimeters focal length at f4 so great for galaxies. The thing is, I'm using a coma corrector. It's a coma corrector reducer from Star Arizona called the Nexus Coma Corrector. So it's a 0.75 times reducer on top of being a corrector. So that now brings me to 900 millimeters focal length at F3, which is just mind blowing to me. So I'm just deciding on which target to shoot. And before I do that, I wanted to look at my image scale. So I have my handy spreadsheet here, and it looks like with the Quattro 300P at 1200 millimeters and using the ASI 294MC Pro, I'll be at an image scale of 0.79, which should be, you know, a little on the soft side, but I'm willing to deal with that. As a reminder to get your image scale, all you need to do is divide the pixel size of your camera, in my case, 4.63, divided by the focal length of your telescope, times 206. The ideal range is between 1.0 and 2.0. Under 1.0 could be a little soft, oversampled, and over 2.0 might be a little crunchy, undersampled. So then looking in Stellarium here, I still have the, uh, the backdrop for my old backyard in here. I'm trying to decide on the appropriate target. I know I want to shoot a galaxy in broadband. It's a nice moonless night. And I hemmed and hawed about different targets, but I think I'm going to go for the whirlpool galaxy that's a nice test of you know 1200 millimeters this image scale this sensor size and a nice bright awesome galaxy to really show the difference that all this extra aperture makes with this huge newtonian so i think this should be a good target for my setup tonight another thing you may have noticed on here is my little guide scope the evo guide 50 a little 250 millimeter focal length guide scope 
which I actually think is going to be enough to guide this 900 millimeter focal length scope. It's convenient though because I was able to use the finder scope bracket and didn't have to put any other attachments on here. So it messed with the balance a little bit, but having the camera at the bottom, I've seen in pictures of other people using scopes like this seems to be the best. I don't think we'll have any trouble in terms of clearance and then the weight is at least centered. I guess I could spin it a little bit to get this as the center point to be even better balance in the declination. I just realized I don't know where I'm gonna put the ASI air. So you need 55 millimeters of backspacing between the coma corrector. So I have the adapters on the ASI 294MC Pro and then a filter drawer here, which is really nice. And I'll be using a light pollution filter in there. I've mounted the ASI air over here. So I think that's gonna help with the overall balance. And then I can run the cords nicely to my devices. That's the plan anyway. There's a grackle's nest in the cedar right here. So if you hear the babies crying and the mother flying back and forth, hopefully I'm not uh, disturbing her too much. I just heard a red belly woodpecker as well. So the reason I'm using the ASI 294 MC Pro in place of say a full frame camera is for two reasons. One, this scope at F4 is really unforgiving. And even with that coma corrector in place, I think with a full frame sensor, it's not gonna look good around the edges. So I'm using a smaller sensor, the 294. And then the other reason is that I get a better pixel scale or image scale with this one. With the reducer on the corrector, this focal length, this camera sensor, 4.63 microns pixel size. I'm gonna get an image scale of right about 1.0, which is great. So it's a great camera choice for this telescope system. So everything's connected up nicely. I think it should work out okay. We'll find out once it starts moving around. The last step I need to take is to collimate this thing. So I'll be using a laser collimator. I'll use the same one that I used for my Dobsonians, which is really easy to use. So I should have no issues there, just some tweaking to get that perfect. And then finding focus and seeing if, if that coma is bad and kind of seeing what this sensor looks like through this scope. I almost forgot the filter. I'm gonna use the new Optolong L Quad Enhance for the first time, which is basically the new Optolong L Pro. So hopefully that does a good job on a broadband target like the Whirlpool Galaxy. We have a moonless night tonight, that is great. So we're just gonna shoot through those Bortle 6 skies. It's supposed to be clear. It is not clear yet, but we still have time. So I'll use this filter in the filter drawer in front of that ASI 294, and hopefully it works out well with this system. Oh wow, holy crap. It's really close right out of the gate. Regular collimation is essential for your reflector telescope to perform at its best. While this is one of the reasons I've avoided using Newtonians for a long time, it's actually really easy to do once you get used to it. I just used a cheap laser collimator I bought on Amazon to get the job done. So it's all balanced and everything's connected. I've got the scope in collimation now, so it's all ready to go, just waiting for it to get dark out. The one thing I'm curious to see is that with this scope shooting at F3, how short my exposures are gonna be. I have a feeling that in one shot color, it's gonna be 120 seconds will be the sweet spot, but maybe even 60 seconds. That's a lot of aperture, 12 inch mirror doing astrophotography. So I'm pretty excited to see what that first sub exposure looks like on the Whirlpool. Okay, my first, my first 90 second sub is about to come through. Here we go, Whirlpool Galaxy coming up. Oh, 120 seconds I did. Here we go, first sub exposure, 120 seconds. Oh my God. Look at that. That's a single exposure. Only two minutes. Oh my god. <laughs>